Hello and welcome to my character guide for Citizens of Earth. This character guide will go over the non-spoiler characters for the game, so that includes 37 of the 40 characters. Uh, the other three characters, including the secretary, are characters that you can only get after you finish the game. So, let's get right into it. This character is the brother. He is well-rounded and has decent attack and defense skills, and he's very versatile and plays well with others. So he's your basic kind of like physical attack, tank type character. I'll place an order with FedUps. What do you want? His talents are that he can go and order things and have them delivered to you without actually going to a shop. That's pretty useful sometimes. If you need anything, let me know. In combat, you're going to want to focus on getting the enemy's attention with your provoke skills and making sure you rack up enough energy so that you can finally use the Charlie Horse or Dog Pile ability. That's going to be the most damage that you can do to an opponent. Also, he has a pretty good defense up ability to give him more buffs if you need it. This character is the Mother. She has a lot of support abilities, including lowering the enemy's defense and allowing other citizens to repeat their actions. She also has a weak special ability. Her talent is that she can tutorialize the game. She's one of the first characters that you get. So you can use her to start to learn how the game actually works. In combat, you're going to want to focus on mainly racking up her energy since she has very little, and then using that to either hug or using the encourage abilities, or use her love ability, which will she has some really good ones. Uh, she has Reminder, which is allowing you to double an opponent and your uh, your ally's actions. So if an ally has enough energy to perform an action twice and you want to do it in the same turn, you can have her use Reminder, and then they'll do it twice. Uh, she also has Sacrificial Love, which allows her to die, but then restore all of the ally's HP and energy. And that's really big. Kisabubu I don't really think is very important, and most of her damage types vary in um, the way that they attack. So she's got a lot of verbal, she's got muscle, and she's got non-type damage to really help yeah. you out in combat. Yeah. She's really good, and you later on you'll get more energy for her if you can equip her with something. Yeah. Oh, your poor old mother. This character is the conspiracy guy. He provides a lot of variety in damage types and in status effects. He's perfect for any situation, and he can reveal enemy weaknesses and their abilities. So, his talent is the Almanac, which you can fill up the Almanac by going and using his attack type ability that allows him to peek at their stats and then at their abilities. That's going to be under the Disclosure tab. You're going to want to use both Expose and Unmask on every enemy you come across. You're also going to want to look into using some of his abilities to confuse people. He can confuse a lot of enemies, or just one, and have a higher chance of it. He also has a variety of attack types like Lightning, Water, and Fire. Never doubted you for a second. This citizen is the Baker. He's really good at healing and reviving citizens, as well as dishing out a lot of thermal damage. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have a good option for gaining a lot I of energy. You must be back. in my shop if you want baked goods! You want something to bunch up? You can go and go to the shop, and the more talent XP that he gets, the more items he has available for you at the Baker. Come back soon! In combat, you're going to want to pair him up with someone like the car insurance agent or the barista so that he can get a lot of energy back without having to use his rolling pin. What you're going to want to do is, if you actually have the energy, you want to just waste the enemies, either with your heat ability or if someone's getting low, you can really dump a lot of your energy into status effects, healing, reviving, or anything you want, really. It's, he's a really versatile character if he has energy, but he's really lacking in power if he doesn't. Another victory for the VP. 
This citizen is the barista. She is fast and very quick to gain energy, but not only that, she has the highest max energy in the game. She is able to give energy to her allies, and her attacks are mainly thermal and verbal type damage. Let's go back to Moonbucks for that. Want some coffee? When you go back to Moonbucks, you can actually buy more coffee from her. And she has more items and more talent XP you get. Have a great day! In combat, really, you've got to focus on just giving energy to all the other people. That way they can use their most powerful abilities and attacks over and over and over again. This citizen is the bodybuilder. He is a beast when it comes to buffing and dealing damage, but he only uses muscle type damage. I need to lift something! Just leave it to me! His talent is that he can lift things out of the way. Really, he's going to be a tank, and he's going to deal a lot of damage if you've got the energy for it. This citizen is the handyman. He's a balanced healer and attacker, with one subtlety. Both attack types are modified by his attack stat. So to target this when he's leveling up, you want to pair him with people that boost attack. Yeah! Leave it to old Wrenchy and me. His talent is that he can open doors. In combat, you can either generate energy by attacking or by healing which makes him really good at both attacking and healing. But when he actually gets to full energy, you can use that energy to do some serious damage physically. I've got a tool for everything. Keep it up. This citizen is the cop. She combines a balanced offense and defense, and she has the ability to buff herself but her high cost attacks are a little strong while weakening the enemies at the same time as she builds energy. The following suspects are still out there, terrorizing the people. Her talent is that she can send you out on missions to find special enemies to kill. In combat, you're going to want to focus on building your energy by attacking all the enemies at the same time with tear gas or by protecting herself with her riot shield. As she yeah. builds up her energy, she can then unleash that energy a with a variety over. of attacks. You're under this citizen is the Gardener. In addition to her attacks, she's skilled at keeping enemies bogged down with a few status ailments and keeping her allies in tip-top shape. She is the only citizen that can give the whole party regen, and you're going to be giving that. Her talent is that she can chop down bushes. I'll prune it in a jiff. In combat, she has a lot of bio-type attacks. You want to pair her up with a couple people that are really strong with bio. That way you can really hit hard on the enemies that have a weakness to that type. And don't forget to use your regen. This citizen is the Architect, and her most unique feature is her versatility to multiply attack damage so that when you engage in enemies, you can dish it out, and she can also keep allies conscious while you focus on stabilizing their condition. What would you like to build? Her talent is that she builds bridges. Go. In combat, she has a lot of abilities that can last for a lot of turns, but most of her attacks are fairly weak. She has a few interesting abilities, though, in her construction features, which can allow you to stop an enemy from healing or give a lot of buffs to fallen allies. Yeah. Uh -huh. This citizen is the lifeguard. She's a really defensive citizen that specializes in revival and restoration and protection abilities, but she has a lot of strength in other areas too. Yes! Her special ability is that she can let you explore the underwater areas of the game. In combat, she has a lot of strong muscle abilities and strong 
water-based abilities. So you can team her up with a couple of other citizens that have strong water abilities too, and really hit enemies that have a weakness to water effects. Her prevention abilities, like the ones that prevent damage, they really don't work very well. I find that as a defensive character, she's not strong. This is the best character in the game, the school mascot. He is a veritable grab bag of possibilities who can function, albeit unreliably, in an offensive healing support and any role you can think of. Unfortunately, he requires a lot of energy. Let's change up the difficulty! His talent is that you can change up the difficulty to make it more difficult for you. If you make it more difficult, you can get more items, or more XP, or even more talent XP. But if you lower the difficulty, it penalizes you a little bit, so that you can't auto-win battles, enemies don't drop items, and you get no talent XP. Me, personally, for this whole video, I've been keeping the difficulty at four times as much in fighting weak enemies. His abilities in combat, the first thing that you're going to want to use is Team Spirit. That is going to boost the XP you earn drastically. It is a crazy amount of XP that you earn, no matter what. Also, he has a lot of buffing abilities, which can increase their attack as long as your allies have a few energy pieces to uh, Keep use. It up. When he attacks, he attacks every enemy. That's how he generates his energy. If you use his main attack, it can also hurt himself, but that's not that big of a deal, because he can also heal himself. He can do some serious damage. This citizen is the Camp Counselor. He's a user-friendly party member with reliable offensive and support abilities. Though he's not a master at healing, he has a few tricks up his short sleeves in that department as well. Choose new camp names? His talent is that he can rename some of the citizens into something that you like. Personally, I like to keep the names that are originally given to me by default. That way I can keep track of who's doing what and what kind of job they have. Unfortunately, you can't rename the vice president if you happen to have a special name for him. In combat, he has a non-type attack and a fire-based attack. You're going to mostly want to make him use his Inspire abilities, which allow the other people in your party to attack first, or a Whistle ability so that the Yoga Instructor or the Cat Lady can use their abilities that allow them to put themselves to sleep, and then you can wake them up. His regular attacks are strong, and he also helps people out a lot. This citizen is the Sushi Chef. He is self-sustainable and does not perform exceptionally better or worse based on the party makeup. He can heal, cure ailments, and dish out a variety of exploitative attacks. <clears throat> hey, what can I get you? His special talent is that he works at the sushi shop, and the more talent XP you have, the better items he can sell you. So In combat, he has fire attacks that deal a lot of damage. He can also gain energy from healing and removing status ailments. A lot of power that he's going to be able to deal with is his ability to attack, heal himself, and attack while healing himself. Also, if you're in a party with people that can increase his abilities, like the architect or the teacher, it can make his knife handling skills even more powerful. This citizen is the teacher. He is a bit weak offensively, but can cripple enemies with status effects and boost the effectiveness of party members. His most unique feature is to increase the party's XP. He has a special talent where he can send people to school. He has a total of nine seats that you can unlock where you can put a person into a tutoring class. It costs more for more XP, but if you can send someone there for eight hours, this is the in-game timer by the way, they can come back with a lot of XP, even at high levels. Get a dug. Get a dug. In combat, you're going to want to focus on generating a lot of energy using his verbal or non-type damage so that you can use multiplication 
don't bother with life lessons. It doesn't give you a lot of XP. He also has some fire-based attacks, too. This citizen is the photographer. Despite being frail, she packs quite a punch and has some useful status-altering abilities. Plus, her darkroom abilities can lead to a massive reward. See if you can find me. Her talent is that she can boost party XP if you can find her in certain locations. In combat, you're going to be focusing on getting enemies low enough to use her duplicate ability. Keep it up. When you duplicate an enemy, they have the same HP, and she can get a huge boost off her darkroom abilities. This citizen is the car salesman. He's a support character with not a lot of direct damage, but he excels in inflicting status ailments and refreshing his allies. He also provides insurance to protect the party. On second thought, let's roll! When you're on the road, you can use his talent to get into a car and drive a little bit faster than you normally would if you were just walking. Also, if you happen to run into an enemy while you're in the car, it'll kill them in one shot. You get about 1 XP each time you hit the wall. Also, in combat, he has the insurance ability which allows you to give the person energy if they happen to get hit. His engine flush ability is extremely useful for people that aren't planning on using energy. Uh -huh. This citizen is the homeless guy. His tactics are unorthodox, faring best when at low HP. He also has the ability to obtain money or items from enemies. Yeah! His special ability is to open up dumpsters, which reflects his combat abilities, which are mostly to get items or money from opponents. He's useful for farming, and his sympathy ability can be used to reflect damage back at opponents. Yeah. He also has a variety of really powerful bio-type attacks as well. Use him in a party with other bio-users to damage weak enemies. You got this. this citizen is the gambler. His abilities represent a high degree of variability and often a high degree of risk. Fortunately, he can spend energy to stack the odds in his favor. Yeah! His talent is that he can use the high roller tables at the casino to buy in for $1,000 rather than $100. You may be able to get some extra money out of this, but sometimes you can't. In combat, you're going to want to make sure that you get his lock-in ability so that you can get high percentage accuracy. When you get 100% accuracy, you can then gamble to make sure that you get that extra boost to the heavy physical attack that he's going to use, and he doesn't miss and lose his health. This citizen is the pharmacist. He excels at inflicting status boosts and ailments, but he also takes it one step further, spreading sickness among your enemies and converting the party's effects into HP or energy. Uh -uh. Yeah, need a prescription filled? When you take the pharmacist back to the pharmacy, you can use that to buy drugs that you can use to cure yourself or perhaps you could use to heal some party members or give you an extra boost. You can get better items depending on how much talent XP he has. Let me know if you need a refill later. Go. In combat, you're going to want to inoculate your allies, or perhaps use the cocktail to give other opponents, yeah. or maybe your allies, special buffs or debuffs. Then you can convert those buffs or debuffs into HP or energy for them to use. Prescribe the he can also use plague Earth. to damage enemies. What a pushover! This citizen is the programmer. As the master of all things mathematical and orderly, he has some of the most unique damage-dealing parameters. In addition, he's the only citizen that can revive himself and redirect enemy attacks. Uh-uh! For his hmm. talent, if you get him near a computer that has access to the internet, you can get into the internet and use it to travel to different areas on the map. Go. In combat, he has abilities that deal damage in binary and in hexadecimal. You can also use his modulo ability 
to prevent damage from yourself and allies. His hacker abilities deal damage, and they deal damage the second turn that they're used. Another thing, if you want to be able to heal yourself or redirect damage, those are the digitize abilities. You can redirect the damage to yourself, then you can digitize so that you can reboot later, and then even if you die, the reboot will finish and you'll come back to life. It's not an ability you can use if you're already dead. This citizen is the captain. He is a fierce attacker and the only citizen that can deal both verbal and bio damage. In addition, he has useful support skills as well. Can't set sail from here. For his talent, he can summon the Ogopogo to travel across the map. But you can only use the Ogopogo when there's a dock, and you can only get off the Ogopogo where there's a dock. So make sure you keep an eye out for those wherever they may be. In combat, he can deal some seriously huge amount of damage. He can also help out the party with a few command abilities, but why would you even need to when he can really kick their asses? Look at that damage. This citizen is the musician. His songs last for multiple turns, spreading benefits to the party and damaging the enemies. Choosing the correct song may require some advanced planning. No set list. His talent is to be able to choose new music. In combat, he has a few abilities to generate energy, but most of his abilities are going to be long-term abilities, ones that last for three turns. He has verbal attacks that can deal damage over three turns, and he also has serenade, which can heal the party. When used in tandem with other characters, he can also steal their energy to replenish his own just before the attack, if you want to even attack with him. Or, if you're facing a particularly difficult enemy, you may want to have him heal over a longer period of time, just in case. Or if they're strong against verbal attacks. Feel the funk. You like that, huh? This citizen is the yoga instructor. She can lead the party in various poses, allowing her to regain HP and energy, or adopt poses to strengthen her for the entire battle. How would you like to focus yourself? Her talent is that she can reverse levels. When she takes away those levels, you get stat points back that you can use to reinvest. So while you're losing levels, you can just simply gain those back, but you get permanent stat boosts. In combat, she's going to take a while to gain energy using her breathe ability. But when you actually want to deal damage using Zen, she's going to do a moderate amount. You can use her poses to increase that amount or use deeper breathing skills to put her to sleep and then wake her up to deal more damage. Group classes I found weren't all that useful because I often wanted yeah. to have other party yeah. members you do some this. other abilities as well. Uh -huh. <clears throat> this citizen is the cat lady. She is the only citizen who can give her allies a chance to auto-revive, making her useful when paired with low HP members. She also has strong offensive and defensive abilities. You just have to deal with her kitties. Do you want to see my kitties? No, no, I... I don't. She has an exceptionally useless special ability. Her talent is that she has pictures of her cats, which help you if you want to recruit her, but when you actually do recruit her, they're useless. And the cats aren't even in the same place. Go. In combat, she has that auto-revive ability that I mentioned earlier, 
But this doesn't work if the character themselves just KOs. Yeah, that's like the beekeeper. What a buzzkill. You're going to want to spend kitties to use her abilities, much like yeah. energy. If you have a lot of kitties, that's good. Yeah, that's but if you don't, you're in trouble. This citizen is the Psychologist. He is one of the few citizens with sleep-inducing abilities, and his attacks can be more powerful if the enemy or he is asleep. His attack type is mainly verbal. Lie down, and we'll examine your dreams. His talent allows you to go into the dream world. This is one of the few fast travel points in the game. It allows you to travel from your home or other places to the campground or perhaps the capital. Most of these are obsolete because of the pilot. In combat, you're going to want to make sure that if you have energy, you use self-hypnosis to put yourself to sleep. The enemy being asleep isn't as important as the psychologist himself being asleep. That way, you can use influence to cause a nightmare. That's an untyped damage attack that does a lot of physical damage. If you're not asleep and you want to gain damage back, and the enemy isn't strong against verbal hits, you can use psychology yeah. to deal some serious damage. Huh. Impressive. This citizen is the artist. Although he cannot inflict status effects himself, he's a master at manipulating them, clearing boosts from enemies, clearing them from allies, and even copying them. Check out my gallery. His special ability is to open up an art gallery. This will give you the concept art for the game. A few of the things have gone into the game, but there are a lot of few things that just haven't made it in, and it's nice to see. In combat, the artist is going to have a lot of low accuracy special attacks. Each of them will do different types of things, but what you're really going to want to do is focus on getting those attacks at the enemy and seeing if you can hit with them. Maybe if you could pair him with some other accuracy boosting characters, he might be a little bit better. This citizen is the Exterminator. She derives her power from bio damage over time abilities and capitalizes on status ailments. Though lacking raw damage output, she knows how to capitalize on an enemy's weaknesses. Let's get him! Her talent allows you to go on quests to exterminate lesser, weaker enemies in certain areas. You're going to want to open up with a fumigate, because that's going to hit enemies with a lot of damage all the time. It's going to last for three rounds, it's going to do continuous damage, and it's going to sicken them. When they're sickened, use Stink Bug to deal extra damage. This citizen is the pilot. She may be slow and oftentimes unreliable about acquiring energy, but her thermal-based attacks are devastating. She can be a very versatile addition to the team. Where to, pal? Hope you went to the little VP's room, cause this flight's non-stop! In combat, you're gonna wanna make sure she has full energy. And if she has full energy, you're also gonna wanna make sure that the enemy isn't strong to fire damage, because that's gonna be the major point of damage you're gonna be doing. When you do, she is going to unleash hell. Well done, team! This citizen is the scientist. In addition to versatile damage types, she has the ability to force other citizens to attack for her, and that can be even when they're dead. 
What do you want to change the current time to? Her talent allows you to change the in-game clock to anything you want. In combat, she has three different types of elemental damage that she can use, including a really rare lightning attack. She also has the ability to get more money from enemies using alchemy, and clone enemies just like the photographer. You can use her galvanism to make a dead ally spasm uh -huh. so that they attack even if they've already been KO'd. Galvanism can also resurrect them and bring them back from the grave. Well done, team! This is the Weather Lady. She requires strict planning since so much of her utility is derived from weather patterns. If you plan ahead, though, her versatility is invaluable. Don't like the weather. Don't like her the weather. Her talent allows you to change the weather. You can change it from rain to snow or something, but you have to be outside. That's very important, even when you're in combat. In combat, you have to make sure that you're outside before she's even remotely useful. You can use good weather or bad weather to generate more energy for her. And once you have that, depending on what type of energy you have, you can start to deal damage or heal your allies or give status effects which kind depends on the weather. This citizen is the super fan. She's good at buffing and cheering everyone on. She has a lot of weaknesses, but if you take her along, she'll make everyone stronger. Check out my collection! I'm using her collection to make this video. She has information on all the characters. In combat, she gives the whole party buffs. Any kind of buffs. Defensive, offensive, special defensive, special offensive. All types of buffs. And she also has a few do-it-yourself heroism things that allow her to resurrect people or block an attack. This citizen is the farmer. If you anticipate a long battle, consider bringing her along. She grows plants to crowd the enemy out, and then reaps the benefits in subsequent rounds. Because of this, she is not the most adaptable, so you can plan your moves wisely. You like homegrown? She allows you to take the items that the enemies drop and convert those into special types of items that you can buy from her. She creates donuts or coffees or other types of special items that you can only find from making them. In combat, her main idea is that you're going to want to plant certain plants. Those are under the garden crops and wild crops. When you plant them, they act just like enemies. Her abilities can heal these special types of enemies to make them grow, and when they are at full HP, you can harvest them to get the effect. For Damn, example, this impressive. watermelon, you can see when there's a watermelon out, if it's not at full HP and it's reaped, like there's no effect. But if the watermelon is out and it is at full HP, she can use her ability to reap like that this. watermelon and heal the whole party. This citizen is the Plumber. One of the more well-rounded citizens, he has a variety of damage types and the ability to steal enemy strength and the power to protect the party from harm. You back for more? I found new items just floating in the swamp. Who flushes perfectly good things down their pipes, I ask you? Do you not want to take them with you? He gives you free stuff. Are you not satisfied with what you have that you keep wanting more? In combat, like it said before, he can steal the enemy's strength, and you can also protect people with Hydro attacks. It's kind of like the bait that the Exterminator has. He has a variety of damage types, but because of his reliance on the Hydro defensive ability, it's good to pair him up with people that also have Hydro abilities, just in case certain enemies are weak to that. This is my height. This citizen is a firefighter. She deals damage over time by setting enemies ablaze and then extinguishes them with hydro attacks. Setting up a combo properly is key to maximizing her damage output. Need a rescue? You need an evac? Hold on tight! Her talent allows you to return home. And then if you use her talent again, you can return to the place that you came from. Need a rescue? 
You want to head back? No problem. In combat, she has fire and water abilities, but I suggest using most of her water abilities because if an enemy is weak, they will return energy to her, allowing you to continuously douse the enemy with water attacks. It's great. There's no need to even use her fire ability. This citizen is the bartender. Unlike most citizens, his healing and support abilities increase his energy rather than deplete it. The downside is that the immediate benefits are accompanied with future side effects. Uh-uh. I got a fresh batch of soda with your name on it. If you can get the bartender to the soda shop, he can sell you items that mimic some of his abilities in combat. He also sells other items if you happen to increase his talent XP. Come back soon! In combat, you want to make sure that the bartender is using classics and the refreshers at the beginning, and then you want to finish off the enemy quick before any of the negative side effects happen to kick in. If you happen to get the negative side effects though, you're going to want to have the pharmacist or the artist along to clear the debuffs, or perhaps swap them with the enemy. These debuffs can be just as powerful as the buffs that he gives, so you want to make sure that they're not on him or other people that he gives them to. Uh -huh. He has a few special attacks, but they're not that powerful. <laughs> this citizen is the beekeeper. She is part support, part offense, and able to fit most party combinations. With her bee companions, she is able to inflict status ailments as well as buff her allies. Let's get a bee's eye view! Her talent is one of the most often used that I've had in the entire playthrough. What she can do is she can zoom out of the arena. This zoom out feature allows you to skip most of the really nasty level design, like particularly the hedge maze, and I found myself using it so often. In combat, however, she can inflict status ailments or protect allies from harm. What you really want to be doing with her is you want to make sure that you're increasing your energy using her defensive drones and then attacking using Queen Bee. Final Sting is one of the most powerful attacks in the game, but it will kill her. There's no way to prevent it. Also, she works really well with other bio-based enemies or allies bio-based weak enemies and allies with bio-based attacks because she can inflict sickness. She can also heal a little bit. Uh -huh. This has been my character guide for Citizens of Earth. If you would like to see the characters that are only available when you complete the game, check out the link in the video description for a little bit extra.